So I'm going to talk about essential tools we need as instructors. Because time is limited, I'm just going to give a general overview, but the aim of this uh, talk is really to inspire you to look for different tools to add into your particular toolkit, because we all have our own. So in this sense, there's two questions we should all reflect upon as instructors. The first one is, how can I improve my technical competence? Because I need to be able to transmit, uh, to, to demonstrate um, an, a safe and effective technique to my students. And also, the second question would be, how can I improve my, my teaching practice? Because I need to be able to transmit this knowledge in an effective way to my students. So, the more tools we have in our particular toolkit, the better, because we will have a whole bunch of resources where we can pick upon when needed. I've highlighted in this screen two different areas, training and practice. These are the areas that actually define us as instructors. When talking about training, I'm talking about our academic background, which will be different for everyone. I'm talking about the instructor training course, with which hopefully would be very similar to everybody. And interestingly, CPD, Continuous Professional Development, which is what's actually going to keep, keep um, us abreast with knowledge and also give us an extra, an added value as an instructor. Very closely interconnected is our practice. We all know that if we don't practice our skills, we lose them, yeah? And we're talking about practice. I'm also talking about personal technique when, with Nordic walking and teaching practice. So interestingly, our practice can help us identify areas for potential improvement. This is very interesting because if we do identify something that we think we can improve, we can always look for a CPD course on that and that will add to our value as instructors. So talking about tools, there's two, let's see if it goes. Uh, now, yeah, talking about tools, there's two essential tools that we all need as instructors. One is knowledge on basic applied biomechanics, and the second one, teaching resources. And we do all actually have a kit of basic tools in this sense. However, these two, there's always room for improvement, of course, and these two areas are very, very large. So I'm just going to give a hint on basic applied biomechanics and hopefully we'll do a little practice afterwards to, you know, to get the, the point that I will make. So first of all, and before carrying on, I want to put this slide. It's a slide I always put to all my students. It's, it's a piece of advice. It's if you really want to learn something, do not take leaps of faith. Don't just believe anything that's told to you, even by me. So take it up, look for a solid rationale behind the information that's given to you because no debugging is not a matter of faith. It cannot be based on some of what someone believes or what someone thinks or how beautiful someone thinks a picture is with a particular posture. So critical thinking when learning is an enriching experience. And I'm saying this because no walking is so as a healthy activity, and it is a healthy activity, but if we don't observe good joint alignment, we could potentially increase injury risk. And I explain very briefly why. It is a repetitive movement, Nordic walking. Every time we go Nordic walking, we, give, we take hundreds of steps. We're using force because we're pushing through the poles. We are using a vibrating element, the pole. And if we don't observe good joint alignment, we are potentially increasing our chances of repetitive strain injury. Yeah, so that's why it's very important, okay, to, to have an open mind and not just, you know, focus on what someone is telling you and believe it just because Christina told you, just go and check it out. <laughs> good. So good technique in Nordic walking is based on good biomechanics, but what is biomechanics other than a really fancy word? Yeah, so biomechanics is a science that applies the laws of physics and mechanics to human performance. So it studies the effects of forces in the human body. So it's all about efficiency of the movement. So we're looking to op optimize human performance, so minimum energy expenditure. And in this sense, it's important to note that effort and efficiency 
are not the same. Sometimes people confuse these two terms. These two guys in the slide are making a tremendous effort. However, the movement they're producing is not efficient at all. In this case, because they have square uh, wheels there. So in Nordic walking, in order to have an efficient movement, we need two things, good joint alignment and appropriate applied forces. I will come back to this in the practical bit in a minute. Okay. So in the practical mini session that we're going to have, I'm going to talk about neutral wrist, the alignment on our wrist. It should be as shown in the screen, hand, wrist and forearm in a straight line. Okay. I will come back to this in the practice that we will do in a minute because I'm going to stop sharing this, this, the, the, the screen. I'm just going to give you this information on my website before so we can finish off without slides, okay? This is my contact information in my website, researchfornw.com. There's a research database there with over 100 papers on Nordic walking that I, I summarized in a very briefly way. It is in Spanish, but I do have that's the arrow pointing it, a Google Translator tool there, so you can translate it into your own language, in this case, English, I hope. And it is not ideal, but it should be good enough, okay? If you do go into that website, you will see that there's some links to online courses. I have them in English and in Spanish, so feel free to look for information on those. I have an e-learning platform. And there's a link to the Nordic Walking Podcast. This is in English. And I've started it very recently. It's already reached 33 countries. So it's amazing how technology can help us spread the word. So I think that's it for the slides. You should all have a pair of poles with you. Yeah? Cool. If not, just run and get them in a, in a minute. Everyone's got the poles. Yeah? OK. So what I'm going to talk, there's, there's loads of different things that we could talk about um, uh, regarding wrist alignment in Nordic walking. Yeah. But what I'm going to pick upon is radial deviation. So radial deviation is doing this, is bringing your thumb towards your radius, right? It is something that we should look out for as instructors because it does happen sometimes. And usually because of people being too eager to feel Nordic walking. So they end up going like this. I don't know if some of you can identify that movement sometimes, okay? So, Radial deviation is bringing the thumb towards your radius. This is the radius. This is the ulna, bones from your forearm. If, you're in, if you think of your thumb as an R, you will remember that the radius is in that side, okay? So let's, oops, let's get the poles and strap them on. You won't see me because I don't have space here to put the camera further away, but I give you some verbal instructions, okay? So, Stand up, your poles are strapped. Hopefully the rubber pads will do the, the trick with resistance. If not, you can try this later, like placing the poles against a wall or something like that. So feet hip width apart, toes pointing forward. Look for a neutral and active posture. Poles on a diagonal. And what we're gonna do is bring this, your hands slightly in front of you and take a small step forward, okay? So all we're gonna do is rock back and forth, applying, just, just transferring my body weight back and forth. Okay, cool. So next, we're just going to let the weight of our arms rest on the straps, okay? Palms are facing each other, this is really important. I'm pretty sure everyone is very familiar with this exercise, don't worry, I'll take it further. <laughs> Okay, so next we're going to push very slightly, very gently through the strap. And we're going to bring awareness to our wrist alignment. So it is really a body awareness exercise. I want everyone to bring awareness to how their wrist is feeling. If you feel stable enough, you can even close your eyes because that will help you focus on the wrist. So make sure you have a neutral wrist as shown in the slide before hand, wrist, and forearm in a straight line. Good? Okay, remember radial deviation, bringing your thumb towards your radius. So try doing that 
we create deviation now. So as you push, you break the neutral wrist. Okay, that's enough. We don't want to do that too many times. <laughs> so I guess that you remember that when I said that in nordic walking, we need um, two things for an efficient movement. We need joint alignment, good joint alignment, which we are obviously not having if we're doing this with our wrist, yeah? And we also need appropriate applied forces. There's two aspects to applied forces. One is intensity, which is not an issue now because we said just push gently through the poles. But the second one is maybe not as obvious to everyone and it is the direction of the push. So try the exercise again with a neutral wrist and focus on which direction you're pushing in. So if we have a neutral wrist, you would realize that we're pushing backwards, down, but backwards. However, if we come to radio deviation, you will see how this favors pushing down in a vertical line. The, the vector of force is going to go down. So this is obviously going to have consequences on our wrist, but also in our shoulders. So come back to doing, doing it again, neutral wrist, we push backwards and radial deviation, the push is totally different there, yeah? Finish off with four or five times of a good wrist alignment. You can close your eyes and try to make a mental record of how this feels, okay? Good. This really brief exercise was a body awareness exercise. Body awareness is one of my favorite resources, uh, teaching resources. When learning or relearning, it is probably the most important one. So do not underestimate the power of um, body awareness. Sometimes it's good to know what we need to do, but sometimes it's good to know what we don't want to do. So we now know that we don't want to go into radial deviation because usually when you teach Nordic walking, People do it correctly, but sometimes when, in that, when we want to really feel Nordic walking, we confuse effort with efficiency and we start exaggerating different things. And this is one of the typical things that especially athletic, really, you know, people who want to feel it come coming to start doing like that with your wrists, okay? So it was a very brief talk. It was a very brief exercise, but I think we have maybe a couple of minutes to, I don't know, uh, answer any doubts or a little brainstorming or something. I don't know, Steve, you tell me. Question for you um, from uh, Zoe. Uh, do you do online training courses? The, the online I do, I mean, the online learning I have is um, basically on theoretical aspects that then every inst uh, instructor or, or whoever's doing the course has to practice on their own. I mean, I, I don't teach Nordic working online. That's impossible. You have, I think you have to, learn with an instructor. What I do is, is it mostly is on applied basic biomechanics, knowledge on that. Well, you have got some uh, fantastic CPD, haven't you, on uh, various things with oncology and Nordic walking and all the rest of it? Yeah, I mean, the, the courses are, one is an introduction to Nordic walking. Uh, there's another one on applied biomechanics regarding the push. It's called the push. Uh, there's another one on field testing for instructors. It's, it's, it's a, a battery of different field testing that they can do to the students. And then the, because I'm a, an ex, expert in exercise and cancer, I do have one on, on breast cancer and Nordic walking. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Christina. That's really good.